Hello everyone, welcome to the Street Crime UK YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more content. Today we look into the Northern Bank robbery from Belfast, Northern Ireland, and how the members of the robbery have forever left their mark on the UK criminal underworld. The Northern Bank robbery where cash was stolen from the headquarters of the Northern Bank on Dongal Square West in Belfast, Northern Ireland on the 20th of December 2004, having taken members of two families of bank officials hostage to ensure their cooperation, an armed gang seized a total of £26.5 million, which was mostly in unused pound sterling banknotes. This was later recognised as one of the largest bank robberies in the history of the United Kingdom. The Police Service of Northern Ireland, otherwise known as the PSNI, the Independent Monitoring Commission, the British Government, and Natisic and the Prime Minister of the Republic of Ireland all claim the Provisional Irish Republican Army was responsible for the bank robbery. This was denied by the IRA and by Sinn Féin. But what or who is Sinn Féin and what do they stand for? Sinn Féin is an Irish Republican and Democratic Socialist Party active in both the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. The original Sinn Féin organisation was founded in 1905 by Arthur Griffith but has split substantially on a number of occasions since then, notably giving rise in the aftermath of the Irish Civil War to the two traditionally dominant parties of the Southern Irish politics, Fianna Fáil and Cumann na Nile, which is now Fine Gael. The contemporary Sinn Féin party took its form in 1970, after another split with the other faction eventually becoming the Workers' Party of Ireland, was historically associated with the Provisional Irish Republican Army. Mary Lou Macdonald became party president in February 2018. Sinn Féin is one of the two largest parties in Northern Ireland Assembly, winning one seat less than the Democratic Unionist Party DUP at the 2017 Northern Ireland Assembly election. In that assembly, it is the largest Irish nationalist party and it holds four ministerial posts in the power sharing Northern Ireland executive as of 2020. In the UK House of Commons, Sinn Féin holds the seven of the Northern Ireland's 18 seats, making it the second largest bloc after the DUP. There, it follows a policy of abstentionism, refusing to sit in parliament or vote on bills. In the Oireachtas, the lower house and upper house of the Republic of Ireland, it is the third largest party. However, in Doyle Eiran, Sinn Féin currently sits as the main opposition and the second largest party, having won the largest share of the first preference votes at the 2020 Irish general election. In 2005, the police forces in Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland made arrests and carried out house searches. A sum of £2.3 million in 2014 was impounded at the house of a financial advisor, Ted Cunningham, in County Cork and Phil Flynn was forced to resign as chairman of the Bank of Scotland and Ireland because Mr Flynn was a director of one of Cunningham's companies. Mr Cunningham was convicted in 2009 of money laundering and had his conviction quashed in 2012 and was later convicted again at a retrial in 2014 for those same charges of money laundering. Chris Ward, one of the bank officials threatened by the gang, was himself arrested in November 2005 and charged with robbery. The prosecution then offered no evidence at trials and Chris Ward was later released. The robbery adversely affected the Northern Ireland peace process going on at the time and as a result it caused a hardening of relationships between the Taosek Bertie Ahern and the Sinn Féin representatives Jerry Adams and Martin McGuinness. Although Mr Cunningham and several others were eventually convicted of crimes uncovered during the investigation, nobody has ever been held directly responsible for the Northern Bank robbery. The police investigation is still open and the case remains unsolved today. Northern Bank, now called Dansk Bank, was the largest retail bank in Northern Ireland, with 95 branches. It was then later purchased by National Australia Bank and its headquarters were at Dongel Square, west in Belfast. It was one of four banks in Northern Ireland permitted to print its own banknotes. In denominations of £5, £10, £20, £50 and £100 banknotes. On the night of Sunday the 19th of December 2004, groups of armed men arrived at the homes of two employees of the Northern Bank, one in Downpatrick, County Down, and the other in Polglass, West Belfast. Chris Ward was taken from his house in County Down and driven to Polglass, where Kevin McCullen, his supervisor at the Northern Bank, had been tied up by men masquerading as officers from the police service of Northern Ireland, the PSNI. The gunman remained at Mr Ward's home, threatening his family. 
Mr. McCullen's wife was taken from her home and held and it is still unknown location. The masked men instructed the officials to report for work as normal at the bank's headquarters and left on Monday morning. The criminals kept in touch with Mr. McCullen and Mr. Ward using their personal mobile phones. On Monday the 20th of December 2004, Mr. Ward was first told to take a bag containing £1 million in cash notes to a bus stop in the nearby Queen Street where Mr. Ward gave it to one of the bank robbers. This was regarded as being a test run for the main theft later in the evening. Mr. McMullen and Mr. Ward remained at work after the close of their business and loaded crates of banknotes on the trolleys which were taken to a white van outside. The two employees were compelled to open up the bank vaults by the threat that their loved ones would be killed if they did not comply with the robbers' demands. The white vans made two runs back and forth from the bank's establishment to take away the loot that was stolen that day. Around 11 o'clock in the evening, Miss McMullen was driven to Drumkirag Forest near Ballynicninch and abandoned in a mix of surrounding forest terrain. Miss McMullen found her way to a house to raise the alarm, where Miss McMullen was treated for hypothermia. The criminals took a total of £26.5 million, £10 million in uncirculated Northern Bank pound sterling notes, and £5.5 million in used Northern Bank sterling notes. Four and a half million pounds in used notes supplied by other banks and smaller cash amounts in other currencies, including euros and US dollars. The police quickly set up an investigation with 50 detectives to assist the process of investigating and arresting the criminals behind the Northern Bank robbery. Hugh Ord, Chief Constable of the Police Service of Northern Ireland at the time, accused the Provisional Irish Republican Army, or the IRA, of organising the robbery. Sinn Féin lead negotiator Martin McGuinness denied the IRA was behind the robbery. Although the Police Service of Northern Ireland initially refused to be drawn in as to who may be involved, a number of commenters, including journalist Kevin Myers, writing in the Daily Telegraph, quickly blamed the IRA for their alleged involvement in the bank robbery. One senior police officer quoted in the Guardian newspaper was saying, This operation required great expertise and coordination, probably more than the loyalist gangs possess. On the 23rd of December 2004, the Irish Times ran a front page story on the provisional IRA's denial of involvement in the bank robbery, and on the same day refused to print a column by Kevin Myers which said the provisional IRA was responsible for the robbery. Mr Myers was reported to be shocked by the spiking of his news columns stating the involvement of the IRA. Some two weeks later, the Irish Times newspaper printed a report that there may be, after all, a nationalist connection in the bank robbery. On the 7th of January 2005, the Chief Constable of the PSNI, Hugh Ord, issued an interim report in which Mr Ord blamed the provisional IRA for the bank robbery as well. The British government concurred with Mr Ord's assessment, as did the Independent Monitoring Commission, who is the body appointed by the British and Irish governments to oversee the Northern Ireland ceasefires. Sinn Féin, however, denied the Chief Constable's claim, saying IRA had not conducted the raid and that Sinn Féin officials had not known or sanctioned the bank robbery. Martha McGuinness is a leading Sinn Féin negotiator and said that Mr Ord's accusation represented nothing more than politically biased allegations. This is more to do with halting the process of change in which Sinn Féin has been driving forward, despite anything that has happened at the Northern Bank. But on the other hand, Bertie Ahern, the Irish Taosek, said that an operation of this magnitude had obviously been planned at a stage when I was in negotiations with those that would know the leadership of the provisional movement. The Independent Monitoring Commission recommended that Sinn Féin was fined for authorising the heist and remarked in the report that the leadership and rank and file of Sinn Féin need to make the choice between continued association and support for the PIRA criminality and the path of an exclusively democratic political party. The provisional IRA issued a two-line statement on the 18th of January 2005, which denied any involvement in the robbery. The IRA has been accused of involvement in the recent Northern Bank robbery, and we were not involved. Despite this denial from the provisional IRA, it was widely believed in Northern Ireland, especially in unionist circles, that the IRA was responsible. Commenters in the UK newspapers speculated that the heist had been intended either to secure a pension fund for IRA active service members or to support Sinn Féin's electoral campaign. In February 2005, the Irish Minister for Justice, Michael McDowell, accused Jerry Adams, who was the Sinn Féin MP for Belfast West, 
Martin McGuinness and Martin Ferris, who were also part of Sinn Féin MP for Kerry North, of not only being IRA members, but leading it from their positions on the IRA Army Council. On the 10th of February 2005, the day the Independent Monitoring Commission report was released, houses near Barra County, Tyrone, belonging to two brothers were searched in connection with the robbery, but nothing came from the searches. In the Republic of Ireland, the Garda Shihana announced on the 17th of February 2005 that he had arrested seven people and recovered over £2 million, including £60,000 in Northern banknotes, during raids in the Cork and Dublin areas as part of investigations into money laundering. The Garda Commissioner, Noel Conroy, did not officially confirm that the raids were related to the Northern Bank robbery, but said the IRA was behind the laundering as far as he was concerned. The arrests were made under the Offences Against the State Act. They arrested individuals included several men from Derry and a former Sinn Féin candidate. Three men were arrested at Houston Station in Dublin and Don Borman was alleged to have been carrying €94,000 that were hidden in a box of Daz washing powder. Mr Borman was later convicted of membership of the IRA in 2007, receiving a four-year jail sentence. The judge said his conviction gave no indication as to his guilt regarding other matters such as the Northern robbery. At a house owned by financial advisor Ted Cunningham in Ferran, County Court, £2.3 million was impounded after being discovered hidden in compost. Mr Cunningham and his wife were taken in for further questioning. Phil Flynn, who was the chairman of the Bank of Scotland at the time, a former Sinn Féin vice president and an advisor to the Taosec, told the police that he was a non-executive director of Chesterton Finance, a company owned by Mr Cunningham and not owned by Phil Flynn. In consequence, Mr Cunningham's home and offices were raided and Mr Cunningham went to resign his positions pending the results of the inquiries. The next day on the 18th of February, the police arrested a man who had been reported to be burning sterling banknotes in his back garden. The man was released without charge but eventually convicted again in 2009 for possession of 200 rounds of ammunition for a Kalashnikov rifle found in his loft when the house was raided. Another man in court handed in £175,000 saying that Mr Cunningham had given it to him to look after. In a separate incident on Saturday the 19th of February 2005, the PSNI confirmed that it had recovered 50 grand in unused northern banknotes from the toilet at the New Forge Country Club, a sports and social club in Belfast for serving and retired police officers. The PSNI stated it was a stunt that attempted to divert attention from the northern bank robbery. But the robbery investigation was still going very thoroughly by the police. It was later confirmed that the cash sum of £50,000 found at the club had indeed been taken during the Northern Bank robbery. On the 12th of October 2005, Garda Commissioner Noel Conroy told a law enforcement conference in Dublin that Mr Conroy was satisfied that the money recovered in Cork in February earlier in the year came from the Northern Bank robbery. In November 2005, the PSNI arrested five men two in Kilku County Down and one each in Belfast, Dungannon and Collis Island. In protest, crowds started to take to the streets and block the road between Castle Wellen and Newry near Kilku, with violence and the burning out of local vehicles. Hugh Orr defended the police action as proportionate, while Sinn Féin MP Michael Gildenew claimed the raids were part of a political stunt. A man from Kilku was charged with robbery, hostage taking and possession of a firearm or an imitation firearm. The individual arrested in Dungannon was named Brian Arthurs, a member of Sinn Féin and a brother of Declan Arthurs, an IRA volunteer killed back in 1987. The man from Collis Island was charged with making false statements to police in relation to a white Ford Transit van allegedly used in a Northern Bank robbery. By the end of 2005, the police's investigations had resulted in a total of 13 arrests and 22 searches. All charges against the men from Kilku and Collis Island were dropped by the Public Prosecution Service in January 2007. Hugh Ord described the developments as a setback. Chris Ward, one of the two bank officials threatened by the gang during the bank robbery, was arrested with regard to the robbery on the 29th of November 2005, and the PSNI had searched Mr Ward's home. Another of the bank employees, a 22-year-old woman who was not named, was also arrested on the same day. 
On the 2nd of December, the police went in 25 Land Rovers to raid Casement Park, the Gaelic Athletic Association Stadium and Social Club in West Belfast, because Mr Ward had worked there part-time. The GAA reported the matter to the Irish government, stating that it had not been warned about the raid on the 2nd of December. On the 7th of December at Belfast Magistrates Court, Mr Ward was prosecuted for robbery and using a firearm. The prosecution's case was based on Mr Ward's actions in the days preceding and during the raid, a suspicious work rotor and discrepancies in Mr Ward's original statements to the police. Mr Ward denied the charge and claimed that the police were harassing him and his family in an attempt to frame him as the inside man on the bank robbery job. Mr Ward complained that the police had held him longer than the gang held his family hostage. Mr Ward was remanded on bail and a date set of September 2008 for the trial in Diplock Court. At the trial for robbery and false imprisonment, the prosecution offered no evidence. Mr Ward was acquitted of all charges and was discharged by the judge. The prosecution accepted that the work wrote a change which underpinned their case had been the result of a chance decision by management. Mr Ward's defence lawyer claimed he had been the victim of a Kafkaesque farce from the treatment from the police and his family. Ted Cunningham and his conviction start in March 2009. The financial advisor Ted Cunningham from Cork was found guilty at Cork Circuit Court on 10 charges of laundering over £3 million, which came from the Northern Bank robbery. In March 2009, financial advisor Ted Cunningham from Cork was found guilty at Cork Circuit Court on the 10 charges of laundering over £3 million, which came from the Northern Bank robbery. Ted Cunningham was remanded into custody and later received a sentence of 10 years imprisonment. Mr Cunningham's son was also convicted on one count of money laundering. When Mr Cunningham Sr appealed his conviction, it was quashed by the Court of Criminal Appeals in May 2012. The Court of Criminal Appeal viewed the warrant used to search Mr Cunningham's house as invalid because it had been issued by the senior Garda officer in charge of the investigation, as permitted by section 29 of the Offences Against the State Act, a state of affairs which the Supreme Court had recently found to be repugnant to the Constitution of Ireland. The Court went on to order a retrial on 9 of the 10 original counts of money laundering against Mr Cunningham. It directed that the 10th, relating to a sum of money allegedly found in Mr Cunningham's home, was not to be retrialed. Tried. Mr Cunningham was remanded into custody with the possibility of bail. At the retrial in February 2014, Ted Cunningham pleaded guilty and received a five-year suspended sentence on two counts of laundering about £275,000. Mr Cunningham avoided imprisonment on account of his bad health and promised to resign from the Chesterton Finance. The sum of £2.985 million and €45,000 that had been impounded during police raids were forfeited to the state. Ted Cunningham sued Northern Bank in 2020 regarding the impounded money, alleging that the Guardian had seized it improperly. The old Northern Bank's £20 note, which was taken out of circulation in March 2005 as a direct result of the robbery at the Northern Bank. The Northern Bank announced soon after the robbery that it would replace its £10, £20, £50 and £100 notes. The new banknotes would have different colours, new logos and altered serial numbers upon being printed. By March 2005, it had done so, meaning that the uncirculated banknotes which had been stolen would be hard to spend, if not impossible. This still left the four £5.5 million in notes from other banks and £5.5 million in old used Northern Bank notes, which were untraceable. After the Good Friday Agreement of 1998 had provided a tentative ending to the Troubles, the political situation in Belfast remained tense. By the end of 2004, the different parties in Northern Ireland peace process were reaching an agreement, but at a meeting on the 8th of December at which Bertie Ahern, Tony Blair, and Gerry Adams and Martin McGuinness were present, the Sinn Féin representative refused to promise that the provisional IRA would stop its criminal activity going forward. Less than two weeks later, the Northern Bank robbery again inflamed tension since. Despite the denials of Sinn Féin, the IRA was blamed by Mr Ahern and Mr Blair for the robbery. In 2005, the UK Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, Paul Murphy, remarked that I cannot hide my own judgement that the impact of this is deeply damaging. Mark Durkin, leader of the Irish Nationalist, Social Democratic and Labour Party, 
condemned the IRA as a criminal enterprise. The IRA rejected and condemnations from Jerry Adams stating that the IRA statement is obviously a direct consequence of the retrograde stance of the two governments it is evidence of a deepening crisis and I regret that very much. Leaked US communications revealed that Bertie O'Hearn suspected Jerry Adams and Martin McGuinness had known about the Northern Bank robbery and this made Mr O'Hearn's attitude towards them become more strained and untrusting. The Garda surveillance had recorded Mr Adams meeting with Ted Cunningham before the Northern Bank robbery had taken place. Alongside the murder of Robert McCartney, the robbery caused the US government to block fundraising for Sinn Féin in the United States in March 2005. The ban was later dropped in November 2005, just eight months later. The Belfast Telegraph reported that in 2015, two murderers were linked to the Northern Bank robbery as part of an international IRA row over the proceeds. Gerard Davison was shot dead in May and Kevin McGuian was subsequently killed in August. When Jerry Adams denied that the IRA was involved in any way, shape or form, the Ulster Unionist Party, the UUP, announced that it could not share power with Sinn Féin any longer and withdrew from the coalition governing Northern Ireland. Bobby Story was arrested and released without charge regarding the murder of Mr McGuian. Mr Story had been accused under parliamentary privilege in the House of Commons of the United Kingdom by Ulster Unionist Party Member of Parliament David Burnside of being the planner of the Northern Bank robbery. In 2014, the former head of the Assets Recovery Agency commented that he believed the IRA was still struggling to launder some of the £26 million taken in the robbery, owing to the size of the haul. Former IRA bank robber Ricky O'Rourke published a work of fiction in 2018 entitled Northern Heist, about a Belfast bank robbery which bore strong resemblances to the Northern Bank robbery as we know it now. As of 2018, the Northern Bank robbery remained one of the largest in the history of both the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland, and no person or organisation has ever been held directly responsible. Who and what do you believe to be the primary source behind the Northern Bank robbery? Let us know what you think about the Northern Bank robbery, and if you believe the IRA did in fact commit this now infamous bank robbery or not. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like and a share, and leave any thoughts or suggestions you have in the comments section. We love to read through them all. And if you're new but enjoy UK true crime content, then subscribe to see when our newest video releases. And as always, stay safe.